Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we continued our discussion on the logistics of Forex trading with a look at something which is known as trading on margin. In today's lesson we're going to continue our free Forex course with a look at how traders determine how much leverage they're using so they can then determine how much margin they need to put up for each trade. So let's get started. As we covered in our last lesson, the real-time demo trading platform which we are using comes with a default leverage maximum of 100 to 1. What this means is that for every contract of 100,000 of the base currency that you open, you need at least $1,000 of margin in your account to avoid receiving a margin call and having that trade closed. The important thing to understand here is that this 100 to 1 leverage is the maximum offered by this particular demo account and the, lever and the level at which if you drop below, the open positions on your account will be closed. With this in mind, it is my opinion, which has been formulated from years of trading and watching other people trade, that most successful traders would never put themselves in a position where they would receive a margin call. The reason behind this is that they employ a money management strategy which controls the amount of leverage that they would use on any one trade and for their account as a whole. This is something that we, which we talk in depth about in module 6 of our free beginner trading course in the free course section of the informtrades.com site. In general, most successful traders I have seen trade use a maximum leverage of 5 to 1 and many would consider even this to be too highly leveraged. The amount of leverage used really depends on trading style as much as anything, as in general, traders who hold positions for short period of periods of time and cut losses quickly are able to successfully employ higher amounts of leverage than longer term traders who need more breathing room in their trades. To help illustrate how this works from a logistical standpoint, let's take a look at a couple of examples. The best way in my opinion to think about leverage and trading on margin is to always ask yourself the question, by how much am I amplifying the gain or loss on my account when opening this trade? For this example, let's say that, I'm, that I start trading with $100,000 simply because this is an easy round number to work through the math with. If I open one contract of dollar yen, then I'm trading $100,000 against the equivalent amount of Japanese yen. So if I have $100,000 in my account and I'm trading $100,000 against Japanese yen, then I'm not leveraged as the cash balance of my account equals the position size I'm trading. Uh, with this example, a 1% movement in the currency pair would represent a 1% gain or loss on the value of my account. As we learned in our last lesson, the used margin column of my account in this example would show $1,000 after the trade, and my usable margin column would show $99,000. If I open two contracts of dollar yen, then I'm trading $200,000 against the equivalent amount of Japanese yen. As I have $100,000 in my account and $200,000 in open positions, I'm leveraged at 2 to 1 as the position size I'm trading is twice the value of the cash in my account. With this example, a 1% move in the dollar yen currency pair would represent a 2% gain or loss in the value of my account, thus amplifying the potential gain or loss on this trade by two times. In this example, the used margin column after the trade in my account would show $2,000 and my usable margin column would show $98,000. If I open five contracts of dollar yen, then I'm trading $500,000 against the equivalent amount of Japanese yen. As I have $100,000 in my trading account and $500,000 in open positions, I'm leveraged at 5 to 1. With this example, a 1% move in the dollar yen currency pair would represent a 5% gain or loss on the value of my account thus magnifying the potential gain or loss by five times. 
For tonight's homework assignment, I recommend working through a couple of examples as I, I've done here with other currency pairs in which the U.S. dollar is the base currency in the pair. Secondly, I encourage you to think about how to go about figuring out the leverage used when the U.S. dollar is not the base currency in the pair. This will be the topic of our next lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And good luck with your trading.